So we talked about a bunch of different things, right? So now we're coming back to our uh, uh, earlier example that we had, the one of customization, right? So there is one thing in customization uh, that uh, we talked about now that helped, right? So we couldn't use asymptotic correctness. We wanted to do something that works with a small number of samples and uh, so that within now every hour uh, we can keep changing the uh, arms and this still you will learn, right? And uh, all of that is fine. So regret optimality, UCB1 will work here, right? But the challenge here, uh, whether it is customization or ad selection, right, is that we really want this to be done for each user, right? right? So we do not want it to be done uh, as, a, as a permanent set of things, right? So we do not want the same news stories to show up regardless of who you are. Right. There might be some of you who are only interested in sports stories, right? So when you go to the uh, web page, you don't want to see all this politics or uh, you know global warming kind of stories, right? Or 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 take the case of uh, advertisements, right? So you don't want to see the same ads for every user, depending on what is it that you are searching for, what is your background, what is it that you have bought in the past, and what kind of things you like. You might want to change the ads, right? And the same thing with the news stories, right? So what what can you do about it? What can you do about it? So one uh, simple thing is to say that, so I want to show different ads or different news stories for each user, right? So one simple thing is I can say that, hey, I'm going to do UCB because UCB is fast uh, in terms of learning uh, with a little regret. Uh, but let us say that I'm going to have one bandit for each user. Each user is going to be, uh, you know, uh, they're going to have one UCB. So what do I mean by that? Okay, if, uh, if uh, uh, you know, Ravi comes to the page, then I will fire up the bandit uh, uh, corresponding to Ravi and then it will give me what action to pull and then I will use that to suggest an ad for this person. Right. It is a fair, fair enough solution, but the biggest challenge is it is hard to train such a solution. Right. If you think about the, the, the whole entirety of people coming to Google or to Yahoo for uh, whatever experience, right? Or, Right. So, then it will run into several millions, right? So, the, the total user base uh, runs into billions and the number of people in, who are coming to a page in a particular hour will run into millions, right? But then if you look at a single user, because if you want to train a bandit for a single user, the number of times the user is going to come is totally very, very, very small, Maybe two times, three times, four times, how many times, unless you, you like me watching cricket and keep hitting reload for the score to change uh, every few seconds, uh, you are not going to have too many visits to a, a page in, 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 in an hour, right? So if I want to train a bandit, right, for every user, for the stories that are going to be live for an hour, right, or for the advertisements that are going to be topical only for one day, right, I do not I don't have a mechanism for training these things, right? So what we are going to do is that We are going to say that, hey, no, it is not that I need to keep track of each user who is going to come to my page, right? I am going to think about users as being grouped together by some set of parameters, right? So what do I mean by that? So users are grouped together by some set of parameters like age, maybe, gender, right? where they are coming from, right? what are their last few search queries. I mean, Google and Yahoo and all these guys have access to m many of these information, right? So what were their last few search queries? Right, what were the last things that they clicked on, right, and what uh, and, and 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 so on and so forth. Right? That could be demographic features, that could be behavior features, that could be engagement features of the users with the web page, right. And based on these, you can say that hey, I don't have to know it is Ravi. All I need to know is okay, it is a, it's a it's a person in his fifties and it's a man in his fifties who you know likes to read about uh, uh, you know sports and uh, and uh, machine learning. And that person is here on our web page, right? Now, what what kind of ads should I show him? What kind of news story should I show him? And so on and so forth, right? It doesn't need to know it is X, right? It needs to know that what are all the attributes of X that might influence what stories that they read. So that is basically what I need to keep track of, right? So such a setting is what we call as contextual bandits, right? So basically, we are assuming that the rewards that you are getting, right? The rewards that you are going to get from the world 
are determined by some set of parameters I like hyper, you can think of these as hyper parameters right. So, that is the mean mu and that is a uh, that is uh, you know variance sigma right because of the uh, the uh, the nature of uh, the distributions that we chose right. So, each arm we said the reward is coming from some Gaussian. So, there is already a set of parameters that is a mean mu and there is a uh, there is a variance sigma for that Gaussian. Now, I am saying nay the mean mu and the variance sigma of the reward distribution are determined by some function of the features of the user. Okay. Does that make sense? So, each arm like let us say I have 1000 arms, each arm is going to have a mu and a sigma associated with the rewards right. Now, I am saying that this mu and sigma or a function of some features or some attributes of the users that are coming to my page right. And this function we typically assume it is linear, but you could use other forms of the function also you could look at more complicated functions for this. Uh, but the most popular one is to look at something called linear uh, some, something called linear parameterization right. So, we are going to assume that each user is represented by a set of features right like I said already right it could be age right gender right, browsing behavior etcetera right. So, all of this could be uh, the features for the user and now this is going to determine what will be the mu and sigma for the arm right and therefore, since this determines what will be the mu and sigma for the arm now instead of learning q a alone I can learn q right instead of learning q a right I can learn q of some features of the context and a. So, where s yes is something like this right. So, it a gender blah 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 all of this make make it a function of uh, uh, so it is basically what constitute the context right. So, instead of a learning q a I learn q s a right and instead of you know being epsilon greedy with respect to q a I will be epsilon greedy with respect to q s a for a particular s that comes in right or I can be uh, you know do u c b also with respect to q s a as long as I have a way of conveniently estimating what q s a should be right. And so, that is what we basically mean here the statistics that you are going to use for choosing the arm which is q will be dependent on that right. So, you, you need now q s a oops q s a and n s a earlier you had n a or n j now you have n s a which is the number of times you have taken uh, action a when the context was yes ok and this is q s a. Right. Now, that is one interesting extension that we could think of here which is instead of saying that the features are of the user alone right I let us say that I have 20 arms and then I have millions of users coming in, but the users all have some features taken from this like what is the you know last 10 topics that they clicked on, what is the last 10 queries that they gave and what is the gender, age and location right. So, all of this could be the features for the user, but it could also have features for the arm. So, once I think of this yes as a set of features, why not I think of this a also as a set of features right the features could be there That's what do we mean by that. So, instead of saying that ok this is story number 33 right something right I could say this is a story with you know about about the middle east it is a story about politics it is a story on conflict the story has some uh, you know um, uh, emotionally disturbing content right all those features I can put in for the stories also. Now, instead of just saying this is story 23, story 42, story 1000 and things like that I can say this is a story with so and so and so and so and so uh, uh, features right. Now, I can learn a q which is a both a function of the context features as well as the action features or the arm features. So, I can put all of this together. So, what is the advantage of doing this? The biggest advantage of doing this is remember I was telling you how the context the number of uh, 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 arms that is available to you is 20, but these are chosen every hour by the Yahoo news editors they choose every hour they choose a set of 20 stories and give it to you. Now, if you are using just a plain plain old bandit, so that means that when they change the set of stories you have to start a new bandit, but now what you can do is 
you do not have to do that because the set of stories now is going to share the features right. I mean there were political stories earlier, now this hour also there are going to be political stories, there were stories about Middle East, this hour also there will be stories about Middle East. So, these features can carry over. So, instead of starting a fresh bandit, you can actually use some of the information that you already have from learning earlier even before the actions changed a little bit right. Same thing with advertisements right. So, advertisements is even worse, advertisements not only do you have millions of users, you have millions of ads also that you can place right and these ads are the arms that you are going to pick. So, instead of looking at ad 1, ad 2, ad 3, if you have features that represents your ads, then you can use that in your action space ok. It is one of the most popular thing like I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the most popular contextual bandit is something called Lin UCB that is proposed by Lee et al. Uh, back in 2010, but still it is it's, it's a pretty uh, uh, useful uh, approach. Uh, the idea here is that uh, you use uh, some form of uh, ridge regression right uh, to predict the expected reward right. The Q function is predicted to be a linear function of the features, but you use some kind of a ridge regression to fit the, uh, uh, the parameters of the, uh, of the Q function right. And uh, because it is a regression fit, you can use your uh, regression analysis to figure out what is upper confidence bound and then once you have the UCB, you can use that to pick the action selection. It gives much better performance with lot less training data than uh, you know classical methods or UCB or other forms of uh, uh, you know generalizing from uh, this kind of training data. So, contextual bandits is uh, it's a very very powerful extension of this bandit setting and it is also a good pathway right. So, we have bandits right, where we talk about uh, only actions right, bandits have only actions right and then all the way to the end we have the full RL problem which have actions right, some kind of a context and a notion of sequence right. So, contextual bandits are somewhere in between where you have actions and context right, but no sequence right. So, we are kind of so, we looked at bandits, we looked a little bit at contextual bandits, I did not get into the algorithm side of things, but just as a, uh, as a motivation we talked about contextual bandits. And from here we will go to the full RL problem from the next lecture, so showing you how you are generalizing this and using the building blocks that we learned here, how you can go ahead and solve the full RL problem. So, we will start with that in the next lecture.